Hi, Anush, are you? Uh, can you hear me? Good, sir. Yes, loud and clear. Good. Uh, just give me 30 seconds. I'll just post this space on my Twitter handle. And I also request everyone to please share this space because I'm sure there are many people who, who are willing to, you know, learn a little more on what has happened, you know, in the parliament and what has been like a 30 percent tax on crypto. And there, there is a lot of confusion, I'm sure that must be prevailing in your mind. So I really want each and every one to share this space on their handle so that maximum people should get benefit out of it. And we'll have a thorough discussion on what has exactly happened and we'll try and answer all those questions that are going in your mind. I'm sure there are a lot of things that are not clear at this very juncture and there are many things which are like like crystal clear. So we'll discuss on all those things. And Anush uh, has been a long term friend, you know, he's been uh, a guide and a very good friend and a mentor to me. And personally, we share a very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, relationship and and anush by the way is also a chartered accountant and uh, he has been in crypto for quite some time and he has done a great job in taxation and i think uh, we were the first one in crypto kanun when i was in crypto kanun uh, i had made a series on taxation when when the, when there was no one in, in the country who was talk about you know taxation i think me and anush made a a series on taxation on crypto so from from that moment itself we have been very good friends and uh, and i really respect him a lot as a professional anush anush i'll just give me 10 seconds i'll just share it on my on my twitter and then we'll start it yeah sure kashya bhai thank you so much for the introduction and uh, likewise the feeling is mutual um, so for for everybody who's on this platform um, good afternoon my name is anush i'm a chartered accountant and i've been working on crypto taxation and regulatory stuff for quite some time now um, it's a landmark day because the government has finally acknowledged uh, virtual digital assets in the country and also come out with a taxation regime. Um, lots to discuss and uh, I'm sure you all have a lot of questions. So looking forward to engaging with all of you and having a fruitful discussion and trying to help all of you out. Right, so already close to 200 people are listening to this Twitter space. So Anush, I just wanted to know that you know, since we were eagerly waiting for the developments and we were eagerly waiting, uh, you know, for some sort of clarity to come in the parliament, and many people were expecting that the bill will be presented in this budget session. But then yesterday itself, we got to know that the uh, you know crypto bill won't be presented in this budget session because it was not there in the list. And uh, suddenly today, uh, while everybody was glued to the uh, to the budget, and and suddenly there was this announcement on you know crypto taxation. So. You know, there are so many questions that are going in the mind of people, especially when I actually heard it for the first time uh, and I tweeted about it. Uh, post that there have been a lot of queries around it. So I just really wanted to know what is your take on it? So to begin with, what is that word transfer means? Because she has categorically, our finance minister has categorically said that uh, there will be a, you know, a taxation on transfer of crypto so i really need to understand the word transfer what is the meaning of transfer here and what is what is your take overall uh, on this development and uh, your opinion on it sure so i think um, overall this is a great day this is this is the first time that the government has in in so many explicit terms come out and said that we are you know we are not against the idea of crypto we we will try and allow it and we will try and regulate it in a manner that you know uh, at least we can generate some revenue out of it not not touching on other laws um other than that i think the the most important thing i see is that compared to the regulation that we discussed last time in the winter session the bill was called cryptocurrency and regulation share digital currency bill today when the honorable finance minister spoke about this uh, this space they were they, she did not mention as cryptocurrency she did not mention the word currency she said virtual digital assets so from the from the sheer definition or this terminology it seems like the bill that was being discussed for so many years now last two years at least um, is going to change substantially cryptocurrencies are being replaced by virtual digital assets and it is going to be a space which the government is going to support uh, by such a um, such a safe and such a reasonable definition or terminal has been adopted it's no longer a currency and i think that's what the government has been saying for a while so i think on that front um, congratulations to everybody who's held and stayed in this space for a while and this is definitely a victory for us and um, other than that in terms of 
in terms of the provisions that have been announced today, um, I'll go through the really the first sentence that the finance minister said, which was that um, incomes from the transfer of any virtual digital asset will be taxed at thirty percent. And while we all understand it's very basic that you know whatever whatever is the profit that we generate, if if we buy something for hundred rupees and we sell for hundred twenty twenty rupees will be taxable. The word transfer is something that really needs to be defined because um, transfer could be potentially me just sending an asset from one of my wallets to another wallet. Uh, as all of you are aware, there is no limit on the number of wallets I can own. I can buy a Trezor, I can buy a Ledger, I can buy so many other wallets. I can have multiple accounts and multiple exchanges. So the government really needs to define whether a transfer means me selling on an exchange, a transfer means me selling to somebody else, or a transfer also means me deploying, say, some of my uh, ETH on a smart contract. It could be there. There are so many different ways I could be transferring money in and around the uh, crypto ecosystem. So that is something that we really need some clarity on. Uh, the the text on the the provision so far has not clarified anything. And while we look forward for more, uh, you know, more, and if we don't get clarity, we can always write to the government as well. Um, it is it is something that really needs to be defined because that will also dictate what the government's position will be on DeFi, on Web 3.0, and the entire on-chain or decentralized ecosystem. So very, very, very important term that, that needs more clarity. Kashibai, back to you. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Anush. Uh, thank you for this input. But Anush, transfer, uh, you know, by just by saying transfer, because this transfer word is creating a lot of confusion because uh, many people are thinking that transfer means that if I, you know, if my crypto and if I sell it, uh, so whatever profit uh, is there, so that is taxable. Many people are thinking like that, but I think transfer word is much more wider than that. And it goes beyond, you know, selling cryptos. In my opinion, in crypto transfer is something which is, that is very integral to crypto. When, when you talk about transfer, you're absolutely right, Anush, that I can do transfer from my own wallet to another wallet. I can do transfer from, transfer from my, my wallet to my friend's wallet or other wallets. I can do transfer to my wallet from a, from a crypto exchange to a non-custodial wallet. I can do transfer to a DeFi protocol. I can do transfer for lending and borrowing. I can do transfer for non-fungible tokens, right, to buy non-NFTs. So what I want to understand, because transfer is such a wider term, uh, and, uh, you know, just by... By saying that it, it so so in on whenever I do a transfer and I when I speak about so many different kind of transfer, are we going to see a taxable event if I opt for any of the transfer that I mentioned? Exactly. That I mean that is a million dollar question right now. If if we look at how governments all over the world have defined this term transfer or have defined taxable events. They have said primarily three things are taxable. If I convert or if I transfer one cryptocurrency or virtual digital asset to another, if I have Bitcoin and I transfer it to Ethereum, that is a taxable event. If I transfer Bitcoin to INR or US dollar or USDT or any other you know stable currency, again a tax. If I were to transfer crypto against a good or a service, you know, if I end up buying a car or if I end up availing somebody's service and paying in crypto, that is also a taxable event. But if I transfer from one wallet to another wallet that I own, suppose I transfer from my hardware wallet to a wallet uh, where I want to opt for certain yield or staking, that should not be a taxable event. And that is where, number one, we need clarity from the government what they mean by transfer. Um, and I think there is already a definition of transfer in the Income Tax Act, which, which says transfer includes the sale, the exchange, and the relinquishment of an asset. And if we if we look at those three terms as well, um, as I mentioned previously, crypto to crypto, crypto to goods and services, or crypto to fiat, all these three events would get covered. But wallet to wallet transfers need to be specifically left out, and it seems to be uh, it remains to be seen how the government is going to track it. Are they going to ask you for all of your MetaMask wallet addresses that you own versus the addresses that you don't own? How are they going to identify a transaction which is just internal to my ownership versus a transaction where I have actually sold assets? Um, these things really need more, uh, you know, more light. They, they need more clarity. And I, I think this is this is probably the biggest question which uh, which needs clarity right now. Yeah, I completely understand, and that is why uh, you know there is a lot of confusion prevailing. In fact, I missed out on one point. Transfer in crypto also means that if I'm uh, you know transferring, or if suppose say I am uh, doing 
uh, you know, uh, transferring my Bitcoin into Ethereum. So suppose I'm converting my BTC into Ethereum or, if, or in an easier term, crypto to crypto trading is an integral part of this, in, in this industry. You know, for any exchange or for this, ex this economy to thrive, we all know that, uh, you know, crypto to crypto trading uh, is an integral part of it. So suppose if I'm transferring my crypto, one crypto to another form, so do you think that that will be a taxable event as well? Yes, that that is a position that we've taken even before this, this guidance came out today, that if hold an asset which has appreciated in value, and now you have exchanged that asset for something else, whether that's another asset that is a good or service or, or rupees, um, you have booked certain profits on it. And as long as you have booked those profits, you are liable to pay taxes to the government. So um, if we have converted Bitcoin into Ethereum and, you know, the Bitcoin when we bought was, say, $100 and when we converted was $200, then there is a $100 profit that we are we are realizing and we would li be liable to pay taxes on. So I I would I would think that crypto to exchanging or crypto to crypto trading is going to squarely fall under the definition of transfer. Uh, if that happens, uh, I'm sure, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how to react to it because uh, if, if that happens, uh, because 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 uh, I know uh, you're, it, it is very difficult for you to answer it, but uh, say suppose the finance minister has said that you know all transfers are going to be taxed, uh, everything that is getting transferred in crypto, though we don't know what is the meaning of transfer right now, but just, but say suppose everything that we do in crypto, that is that if we do a transfer or if we do a crypto to crypto trading or if we do wallet transfer or whatever we have discussed here, if that uh, you know is taxed. Uh, what is your take? I mean, is it going to, uh, how do you, what is your take on it? How exchanges are going to react to it? Because somewhere uh, exchanges, you know, they thrive, their business model is based on crypto to crypto trading because they earn their fees from, you know, trading. Uh, do, you th do you think that that is going to impact, you know, exchanges revenue as well in the longer run? It will be very difficult for them to, uh, to survive without crypto to crypto people getting into crypto to crypto trading because obviously people will be discouraged to do that if there is a, a straightforward 30 percent tax on it i think the the tax will apply irrespective whether we are doing crypto to crypto trading or we are doing crypto to inr trading uh, as long as we are realizing profits there will be a tax on it um, crypto to crypto was essentially introduced you know for to make it easier for traders to just move from one asset to another rather than to have to move into a stable currency and then move back to another, another asset and this is very pe peculiar to the crypto space um, what what is going to cause a lot of people to probably not participate or new people not to participate is the compliance burden now if i have to report each transfer if i have to document it if i have to do my calculate my taxes on it and basically figure out which are my wallets which are then exchange wallets um try and uh, you know document the price at which i bought the price at which i sold it's it's, it's going to be a lot of transactions a lot of documentation you know a, a lot of bookkeeping that potentially will be a headache for anybody who gets into this space um i think that could lead people to probably interact with this space lesser unless and until exchanges themselves come out with you know with some tools or with with some um, with some reporting requirements uh, which which make it easier for traders and investors to figure out you know what were their transactions how 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 can they calculate their profit and loss but um i think um it 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 we seen how you know how much of a compliance burden this is going to be this is going to be the first year in which these laws are going to apply and most likely um, a, a separate section in the income tax return should also be provided where we are disclosing these incomes on the virtual digital assets it'll also be a given a format where you know we will disclose okay this was the asset name this was the cost of acquisition this was the sale and we'll probably have like hundreds of thousands of transactions in a year so uh, it, it 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 will it will um really be seen at the end of year one in terms of compliance, how much work needed to be put in. And then maybe, you know, people will feel that, yeah, this is, this is very complicated to get into. Yeah, I completely agree with that because the complications, the paperwork, the, the compliances, the record keeping, everything will get cumbersome. Uh, now, another question is, Anush, we, as we know that, you know, India is a hub for software professionals and there are many people who are earning full time in crypto. So, but, so there are many graphic designers, there are many software professionals who are working from India and they are giving their services to, to the companies, to the wallet service providers, to, to various decentralized applications that are being built on blockchain. So they're working for many people and they're trying, and so some of them are working as a full time and some of them are working as freelancer and many people in the country today earn 
in crypto so so just imagine for 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 some uh, crypto earning from crypto might be a you know they might be doing it for uh, as a as a part time thing as a trading this thing but there are people who are earning crypto just to just to do, do the basics basic living so it it is the only source of income from for them so do you think that uh, here earlier they were treating it as a income normal income now they have to pay taxes uh, equivalent to 30% i mean even if they are earning 5 lakh or 6 lakh rupees it doesn't matter so what is your take on that yeah i think there are there are two aspects to this where, where people are or where consultants or software engineers are providing services against crypto number one is that the 30% tax rate flat is a little unjust because there may be people who are earning money in in totality during the course of a year which does not typically fall under a 30% tax bracket and they could have got the benefit of being taxed at 10 15 20% tax rate but only because they are opting to receive these services in crypto they are getting taxed at, at the you know at at the higher 30 bracket so it is it isn't fair but i think it's also the government's way of saying that they they prefer if individuals just interact in in ina or when it comes to uh, providing services uh, number 2 is that because the government has clarified that no other costs or deductions will be allowed um, from this income if i were to get paid 100 usdt as as a service um because i did not incur any cost to acquire it other than my time i would not be able to claim any expense on it and my entire income would be taxed at 30% whereas typically in a business i have incidental expenses like you know i have electricity i pay rent i pay i may you know pay for petrol i may pay pay a driver salary i may pay so many other things which are allowed as legitimate expenses but only because i choose to take that money in crypto now i will not get the benefit of any of these incidental expenses so um definitely um something that you know needs to be explored further but prima facie it seems like people who are receiving uh, salaries or you know payments in crypto uh, possibly will not have the the you know the benefit of claiming expenses or the benefit of lower uh, slab rates they will be getting taxed at a flat 30% got it i mean obviously it, it, it's it's like a quite discouraging for for people who are who are working full time for many crypto companies and or who are providing services uh, to crypto companies uh, by doing as a freelancing this thing or part time and earning in crypto because for them uh, it doesn't matter if it's an income for for them because the rule says uh, as of now that you need to pay flat 30% taxes irrespective of uh, Uh, which slap you fall into so 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 that's that's something that that is clear and i'm sure uh, it is really going to hurt the sentiments of uh, people who are directly or indirectly employed in the crypto sector and working for companies uh, who are based outside india uh, another po- important point out, out of the discussion that we had today anush is uh, there is also uh, so there was also this term that you cannot um, carry forward your losses uh, so if you could just clear that term what is what is the meaning of carry forwarding the loss uh and deducting it from your income if you can just tell us the concept of that how it is done in stocks and how it will be different in crypto today yeah sure so typically if suppose i am a businessman i have a, a business of manufacturing and selling goods if i were to incur a loss in a particular year there are two scenarios number one if i have another business which is profitable i could set off the loss of this garment business against the 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 profits of another business and my tax liability reduces scenario number 2 is that i would be allowed to carry forward that loss for a specified number of years meaning that if i have a profit in my garment business for the next 6 7 years i would be allowed to set off that loss in the next uh, in the subsequent assessment years that is typically how uh, you know losses are carry forward and set off against different sources of income but unfortunately for crypto the uh, uh the law that has been introduced today simply says that the only time you can set off a loss is that year itself and against only a crypto income you will not be allowed to carry it forward for any year nor will you be allowed to set it off against any other source of income so going back to my original example if i am a garment business and i have a crypto trading uh, business also if my trading business of crypto is is incurring a loss i will not be allowed to set it off against profits from my other business um i will not to take this for to take this loss forward for the next few years in case crypto is uh, uh, profitable in the next few years 
I, I will not have the benefit of uh, setting off that law. So uh, typically for businesses, you know, these these uh, provisions are allowed. I It seems that the government does not want uh, to consider crypto trading or, you know, full-time activities in crypto as a business, which is why they're not, they're not allowing carry forward of loss. They're not allowing set off of loss against other sources of income, nor are they allowing uh, incidental business expenditure to be set off uh, or to be deducted from the revenue. So, um, at the moment, uh, only within that year itself, if you have incurred a loss on Bitcoin and if you have a profit on Ethereum, that is the only time you can set them off uh, against each other. There is no other scenario where you can set them off. Okay, so, so that is that is clear. Anush, what, is, uh, what do you think? I mean, uh, so, so suppose if, if somebody is doing a peer-to-peer -peer, you know, transfer, so we have seen that P2P trade has uh, grown leaps and bounds on you know a couple of exchanges. So there's one exchange there that is still following P2P model. What is your take on that? Is it, there also it means that the transfer has happened and that will be taxable? Uh, yes, uh, transfer would... I mean, in the strictest of definition also, even if the government came out with clarification of what is a transfer, you know, where a transfer means uh, anything outside of wallets that you own yourself, if you are doing peer-to-peer, -peer, it is going to be treated as the same as you selling on a, you know, a centralized exchange as well. Um, as long as you had an asset and you transferred it to somebody else and you have received certain concentration in exchange for it, um, you will be liable to the tax regime that has been introduced. Okay, so... Uh, Arush, uh, you've seen, you know, you've been seen since you are into taxation and you've seen, you know, developments happening in, in many parts of the world. Uh, how how crypto is like taxed in US? Because since you, you've been working with many clients in US as well and in Europe as well. Uh, if to say, suppose, uh, you know, compare this thing with the with what is happening outside and how things are, you know, taxed outside in India or and most problem. Uh, most likely in the developed nations how are you going to compare you know the current uh, this thing and uh, with developed countries what is happening there if you can just let us know so broadly um in the us crypto is treated as a property which is similar to capital gains or capital assets in india and any sale or purchase uh, which leads to a profit has to be reported as um, you know income from property in the us um, i think what the, the difference here is that the government has come out with a very very strict regime when it comes to crypto they are not appreciating the underlying transaction if the underlying transaction is me of providing a software service to somebody and getting paid in crypto i should be allowed a, a, a business expense if the underlying activity is me engaging in mining on the bitcoin network then also i have expenses of heating cooling you know uh, hardware uh, uh, hash rates uh, stuff like that which i should be allowed and if i am engaging in trading then only do i have a cost of acquisition be very easily identifiable so there are many underlying businesses or activities or commercial operations which should first be identified and then we should figure out what is the tax regime. So typically, if I'm an investor, I should be paying capital gains. If I'm a trader, I should be paying incomes under, uh, tax, income tax under a business income, profits and gains from business and profession. And if I'm a mother, again, I should be paying income, income tax as a business. But here the government has said, we don't care what is the underlying activity. As long as you are engaged in virtual assets, you have to pay tax at 30%. And that is where there is a disconnect with other regulators over the world. Regulators in other parts of the world do appreciate the underlying activity and they say okay fine if you are just receiving crypto as um, you know as a means of and you are not engaged in investing then we will still treat it as okay maybe a consultant's income and tax it accordingly as consultant's income are taxed in you know as, as simple I, in INR terms so um, that is where I think we have taken a little bit of a hard hit but again this is the first draft of the first ever regulation that has come out around crypto today um it is subject to change it is subject to evolution but um i still feel that you know it's 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 a pretty big step and the government will take um uh, you know um, cognizance of regulations in other parts of the world and may come, come out with amendments in the future anush we have seen uh, that you know so so suppose if somebody wins uh, a lottery or somebody wins you know some amount in while playing uh, American rule or or maybe or, or through gambling maybe in a simple word uh, or somebody receives a gift right so don't you think that you know uh, at one moment we are saying that it's okay fine we have moved on from private cryptocurrencies to saying it as a virtual digital assets so at one moment we are trying to you know put you know these uh, cryptocurrencies into 
uh, you know digital assets uh, maybe t- trying to treat them as an asset going forward uh, that is obviously a great sign uh, as you said uh, and the other on the other side we are trying to uh, tax it at a flat 30% uh, equivalent to an income that is earned maybe through gambling or through lottery right so don't you don't you think there is a conflict there uh, if if if, it, if we are treating it as a virtual digital asset then a flat 30% uh tax is uh, like a little too harsh because we have seen it in in india a 30% slap 30% flat tax rates are generally levied on gambling income and income from lotteries and maybe as a gift what is your take on that yeah 30% is is definitely harsh and and especially for people who may have just earned say 2 3 4 5 6 lakhs in a year they should not be subject to this 30% tax liability um if if we were to look at the characterization of income from digital assets as per the, the finance minister today it seems to be more in line with income from lotteries income from gambling because that is where there is a flat uh, levy of 30% and that is also where you know incomes are not allowed to be set off against other heads of income so um, it seems like the government is not uh, you know very very inclined towards encouraging this space to, towards encouraging investors to investors or traders to participate in this space and probably i mean who knows the government realized that a lot of money was made during the last year when bitcoin went from 10000 to 60000 dollars and you know it came back, back down uh, a little bit but people did profit a lot so the 30% could also mean you know just uh, a government's position to uh, take their piece of the pie in in what seems to be a very lucrative and a very profitable industry um it, it's difficult to pinpoint whether it's you know one reason or the other or it's or it's a little bit of a bo- of both but um 30% tax rates are are not something that a government would levy on an industry or a space which they are trying to promote so um prima facie it seems that it's it's something that the government is not the keen towards a lot of people participating and the 30% uh, tax rate is a deterrent yeah it, it it looks like that uh, uh anush um, what is your take on the overall you know how people are going to take it i mean uh, say suppose we were think as we see exchanges that you know many people enter into crypto uh, for making money right uh, and we have seen that many youngsters they enter into crypto you know for these for the sense of you know making money and you know uh, and that to making a quick money and we have seen that post uh, covid i mean uh, there have been a huge in crypto do you think that you know now uh, people will be a little apprehensive in entering crypto because they'll feel that you know now you have a flat 30% tax on on incomes uh, so there is nothing much left in it i never wanted to enter into crypto for technology and i any which ways i didn't understood that so do you do you think that now people will be discouraged to enter into crypto because uh, because of this uh, uh, tax regime um i think that question can be answered by looking at the profile of the person entering the space if somebody is entering the space as as an investor or a trader and he knows that yeah this space is going to be taxed at 30% similar to if he was getting into betting or gambling he might say okay fine you know i take a punt i'll put in some money if i make if i make 100 rupees then i get only 70 he could be potentially okay with it but if somebody was getting into the space to provide services or to you know run a business and they knew that they don't have the option to deduct any expenses or they don't have the option of a lower slab rate to take the benefit of if they were to earn say a, a lower income than what is applies to a 30% tax bracket and that would make a substantial difference to them that you know if i take my money in inr if i receive an inr i'm going to be taxed at 10 or 15% uh, or you know i i'm allowed so many other expenses that substantially bring my profit down but if i decide to take money in crypto i am stuck at a flat 30% rate so um depending on the profile of the person or the underlying commercial activity it will make a huge difference and especially for um consultants especially for freelancers especially for software engineers who are providing services overseas this is go- um, you know the tax regime that has been announced today will be a crucial factor in deciding how you know they want to be paid whereas investors or traders um you know if they're just looking at this as a uh, you know as as similar to stock trading or gambling or betting um, i think the difference would be substantially lesser okay i completely understand that so i mean you're saying that uh, uh, maybe you know so in longer run maybe it'll be, it might uh, be 
it might not have that much of an effect but in, in maybe in a shorter perspective maybe the people will be discouraged to enter into crypto because they know that uh, even if they end up making uh, you know money with that they were making earlier now they need to pay you know 30% tax flat on their earnings uh, one important part i really wanted to touch upon is the state of startups uh, in crypto space uh, don't you think so because startups uh, you know who are building in, in in blockchain space need to interact with crypto on day in day out basis you know they need to transfer their tokens to to places they need to interact with them they need to put it on staking you know and and even if they are supposed to make payments to their employees uh, they need to you know uh, tra- you know they need to sell it and then uh, pay pay salaries to their employees in in, in the country so don't you think so that the the, the flat 30% regime is really going to hamper the startups uh, as well in the longer run yeah yeah it it is uh, kashif you forgot the most important thing which is how these startups typically raise money if you are a crypto based startup and you have raised money through an ico ieo ido or any of these on uh, you know uh, crypto oriented uh, methods of raising money is the government now going to consider all of the funds that you have raised as income and tax it in year 1 that is going to be um, that is going to be catastrophic for the for the startup right if they have to pay tax on the entire capital that they've raised from their investors just because they received it in in virtual digital assets so that is going to be uh, deterrent number 1 uh, possibly from setting up in india i don't think startups which are which want to get into the space will say okay fine you know it's it's the rate is very high so we we won't do it they will find another jurisdiction from where they can uh, you know they have ease, ease of doing business they are able to still operate um um effectively they are still able to interact with all of the you know employees they want to operate uh, either in india or overseas but in a jurisdiction which allows crypto as a means of payment in a jurisdiction which allows crypto as a as a means of uh, raising uh, raising money as well um it's only the people you know who will physically be situated in india or the startups who, are, who choose to phys- physically be headquartered in india those will be the ones which will struggle a little bit because they will always either have to pay tax at the, that 30% flat rate or decide to engage in their operations primarily in INR to not be taxed at these high rates so it's so in a sense we uh, we can expect that there are many uh, startups who are who are uh, earlier trying to base themselves uh, in india might look out for a for places where they have you know a better tax treatment or a or a lower tax treatment and uh, so in a sense do you expect that there are many transfer who are many startups who are going to relocate themselves maybe and figure out a better place in terms of uh, taxations yeah i think the exodus has already is is already happening or it has already happened uh, most of the new crypto startups do not look at india as as a jurisdiction to headquarter themselves in um obviously there's a lot of talent here there is there are a lot of uh, you know crypto enthusiasts here so there are there is still a way to engage with people here but um it's it's more it's more like countries like singapore dubai um, uh, sorry uae and um, probably um, uh lithuania uh, uk is uh, uk is popular as well and us is fairly digitized but at least they still have a better attitude towards crypto so uh yeah startups are 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 already moving overseas they are finding a way to still work with software engineers in india with consultants in india with marketers in india but um, very few are domiciled in india only or headquartered here great uh, so many people were asking me this question i really uh, got a lot of messages in the morning after this announcement that uh, from when we can expect uh, this rule to uh, you know when from when we have to actually follow this rule so i mean uh, is it from the april 2022 or 1st of january 2022 so many people are or they were also concerned that you know if suppose uh, this taxation is i mean so do i need to pay taxes from day 1 from day 1 if since we have been dealing into crypto or from the day uh, this gets into effect so this is one question one common question i'm sure that must be going on in everybody's mind the text of the budget speech um, actually has an error it says that this uh, this provision will go into effect from financial year um start uh, financial year 23 which means 1st april 2023 i think it is a mistake uh, most likely it is going to be in effect from 1st april 2022 there has been no mention of a retro uh, i am sorry sorry to interrupt she has spoken that she she has spoken about the date 
uh, look, it is mentioned in speech. There is a there is a typing error. It says first April twenty twenty three, but um, it should be first April twenty twenty two because that is how typically all budget sessions work. That they announce the regulations in end of Jan or Feb, and they become applicable a month, uh, two months later in 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 April. So it is mentioned in the budget speech, and that is what we expected as well. That if any uh, any tax legislation was to come out, it will come out now, and it will apply from the financial year which begins two months from now, which is first April two thousand twenty two. So suppose uh, I have to. So suppose I've been so anybody who's dealing in crypto since two thousand say seventeen or eighteen. Uh, what about that? I mean, uh, so he has to pay taxes from April or effective April, or there is a possibility that some you know the person has to deposit taxes going from going back in the past, and they has to calculate from day one. So retrospective um, uh, applicability was not mentioned today, and it is rare that taxes are announced retrospectively. Um, this tax regime specifically will start applying from first of April. Until then, um, if you have made any money, you were supposed to comply with existing tax laws, which typically said, uh, you know, which typically the position was that if you are an investor, you pay as business income. If you are an uh, sorry, if you are an investor, you pay as capital gains. If you are a trader, you pay taxes as business income. That is the approach that we have been following for a while, and that is the approach that has also been readily accepted by the income tax department. But now with this new legislation and with very clear cut definitions of how this income needs to be treated, first April two thousand twenty two onwards, any incomes that you make uh, will be taxed at a flat thirty percent. Okay, so so suppose. Uh... on case to case basis if suppose government wants to uh, figure out that if you have deposited tax on your uh, on crypto in the past uh, they can they can any time send you a notice and get that information isn't it yes they can they have they have they have the authority to ask you for information on your previous trades on your exchange reports and uh, anything ancillary activities uh what what is that uh, there is also a mention of 1% tds as well if you can just throw some light on that sure so the government is saying that if you if you buy or sell crypto from from or with anybody which is above a certain monetary threshold now they have not defined that th- threshold at the moment in and and if you exceed threshold then the you will uh, you will be required to deduct 1% of that consideration whatever you are paying to purchase that crypto and deposit it with the government and uh, uh, while the the limit has not been defined yet but it is definitely one of the biggest uh, you know it's the, the compliance burdens that you know if if i buy and sell crypto frequently as a trader and if on each trade i have to figure out whether i cross the threshold or not and then uh, you know go to the income tax portal pay that much tds um, also obtain the pan details of the other party that i am transacting with because that is how i will deposit the tds it's going to be a hugely complicated task and i think um, this is going to be providing the biggest compliance burden and on exchanges as well because the trading happens on Wazir X, Coin DC X, etc., and where you know any trade exceeds a certain amount, the exchange will also be responsible to ensure that this you know compliance with the law is 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 maintained. So um, it it is pretty complicated. The the government is trying to do that uh, to ensure that the government gets information on all trades which exceed a certain monetary threshold, and it's just their way of uh, you know ensuring that they have overall visibility on all high value transactions that take place in the space. what is your take on uh, people who must be thinking that fair enough uh, this taxation is applied to the uh, indian exchanges indian crypto exchanges i am i am not on crypto indian crypto exchanges so so if somebody is wondering that uh, you know they will use uh, you know decentralized exchanges or or amm you know automated market makers or decentralized exchanges so so i mean what is your take on that if somebody is thinking on doing that I think the government has very smartly used the word transfer instead of saying anything like sale to INR or sale on Indian exchange because they understand that this space consists of centralized exchanges as well as decentralized exchanges, you know, and and NFTs and and so many things to to encompass all of it with uh, you know with one word transfer does it all. Um, while we still need more details about it, but there is absolutely no uh, you know uh, no provision which says that only Indian exchanges. will will you know determine your tax liability only if you trade on uh, indian exchanges will you be liable to tax uh, irrespective as long as you are an indian resident and this is not from today's definition of taxes this is basically something which is called uh, tax residency as long as you are an indian resident and you stay in india for a certain number of days in a year 
all of your incomes will be liable to um, income tax and inspector or whether you're trading on an Indian exchange or an overseas exchange. And I think the government has verified this because it is a pretty straightforward position and has existed since so many years. So that would that would still uh, you know apply squarely. Go ahead that as long as you are an Indian tax resident, you will need to be paying taxes in India. Great. Uh, thanks for that clarity. Arush, uh, any closing thoughts on, uh, you know, because there are many people who are who are not sure that they should be celebrating or, or they should be sad or and, or how they should be reacting. I, I can't see the faces, but I'm sure there are many people who really don't know at this very moment how to react to this particular shit. Because I know there are many people who are working, because, you know, since I know there are many professionals who are, who are working in this industry and they were earning close to five to six lakh rupees per annum in crypto. And now, you know, their whole, uh, you know, they were, they were only dependent on that income. And now, uh, if somebody is earning, say, suppose six lakh rupees per annum, uh, in a normal scenario, is he was treating his income as a normal income, and he was deducting, you know, all those housing loans and all those, uh, you know, he's, he was taking benefits of mutual funds and tax instruments earlier. But now he he won't be able to deduct anything from the, you know, from his income, and his income will be taxed at thirty percent. So imagine a situation for a person who's who's earning uh, close to six lakh rupees uh, is supposed to pay. One lakh eighty thousand rupees as taxes. So yes, for for them, obviously it's kind of a doomsday, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> uh, it, it it is. As if if you put it like that, it is pretty difficult for this person who is making six lakh rupees a year and earning only in crypto. Um, something that we tend to forget very easily is that we have been living under the fear of a ban for the you know good part of the last two or three years. And today is the day when you know we finally have some clarity from the government that. They are they are at least in time in time towards taxing this economy. Um, until now, every time you know um, it was time for one of these parliament sessions, there were so many rumors that this bill will actually ban it or this bill will regulate it. But this time, we've heard from the horse's mouth. So it's definitely a day, if not to celebrate, but to relax or to you know take it easy to know that it's not going to be banned. This is an industry will be which will be allowed to move ahead in this space. Uh, when it comes to taxation or you know to to create a broad regulatory framework around the space. This is this space is evolving and growing so quickly. The government will always be playing catch up, which is why there are so many questions that we need to be addressed, even from today's um, you know tax regime, which has been announced. But I think um, as we move forward, the the industry will will interact with the department. The industry will interact with the regulators, ask these pressing questions, ask for clarifications, uh, you know, make recommendations for amendments and as well. And this is typically how regulations evolve. So um, that may take some time, but until then. If we can figure out a way to work within this space and at the same time comply with whatever is the tax regime today while waiting for amendments, I think that's the best way forward. Um, if, if, if uh, in your example, if there's a software developer who's earning six lakh rupees uh, per annum, if he has the option of converting it into iron and receiving it in INR or dollars, but still work for the same company, I think that would significantly, um, you know, be a tax efficient option for him. Uh, if if not. And if he can only receive in crypto, yeah, it is it is slightly going to be more expensive. But this is again where we will write to the government saying that you know it's not fair for the smaller taxpayers to be paying at a thirty percent tax tab only because they choose to accept crypto. So um, um, it's 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 basically where you know there is a little bit of a disconnect, and we will need to be patient with the government while they bring in more amendments around this law. But Anush, I I also thank you for the, for that because I, why I'm asking you question one question after another because there were so many questions in my mind. So sorry, I'm 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 not able to compliment you on your answers and to <laughs> but I really want to you know want to ask you so many questions. One question I have in my mind is about NFTs. Say suppose uh, NFT NFT is an art, uh, Anush, and I really like those you know, those pictures, those apes, you know, those, those cats, those, those dogs and those flowers, those, you know, so I, I'm, I'm a collector. I, I, I wanted to collect, collect them as a, you know, collectibles. So what is your take on that? Will that be taxed as well? So if I'm supposed buying from my fiat money, and if, and if I'm buying NFTs, so what is your take on that? Yeah, actually, uh, Kashmir, that's a good question. Government has actually in in the law that they have proposed today, they have defined virtual digital assets as well. And the definition of virtual digital asset actually includes NFTs. I'm just going to uh, pull up 
तो सेक्शन नंबर फाइव कैन फाइंड इट अदरवाइज आई विल पोस्ट इट ऑन माई ट्विटर राइट आफ्टर दिस ट्विटर स्पेसिस बट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ virtual digital asset that they will include under section 2 of the act includes nfts and those you know uh, it, it, nfts have been included here um, the, the tax law that has been recommended today will squarely apply to nft so if if i am um, if i am say an artist and i have generated an nft and i am selling it i will also be paying 30% and if i am someone who is who's investing in an nft and then you know selling it forward i will be paying 30% tax on whatever is the profit that i made the, the difference between the sale price and the cost of acquisition for me great so what i'll do anush uh, thank you very much for all those answers and i'm sure uh, there are many that must be there in in audience uh, mind as well so i really want them to give give an opportunity and i'll take couple of question question i will not i won't be able to take all the question i'm sure because there are already some requests that have dropped in so i'll take couple of question and then probably we'll we we'll proceed for a closure because i know there are your time is important and uh, and today is must be a very busy day for you uh, uh so so i'll request anyone who, if if they have any question in their uh, in their mind of they really want to ask anush about it uh anush will be happy to answer them or probably i can answer them as well it, okay chahal you want to ask something kya chahal you are now a speaker chahal your question please yeah um hi kashif hi anush thank you so much for like the clarity which you gave i was actually looking for that so actually i was also thinking that it's overall it's positive considering the uh, regulation and stuff like that but a lot of it is like negative because the tax bracket is really really high considering because i get paid in crypto now i don't want to get paid in crypto anymore so all of these things are there so i just wanted to ask that do you think for example when it comes to getting paid in crypto that should not be there and that would be reduced and how will exchanges suffer from this along with that even startups and stuff like that because i think they are going to like the amount of startups how they were increasing in india is going to reduce significantly in my personal opinion is that right i just wanted to ask that um hey chal i'll go ahead um in terms of you receiving in crypto i think the the, the short term fix would uh, for that would be either to discuss with the company that you work with if there is a way for you to be paid in INR or dollars if you want to reduce your tax liability um or you know if if uh, they are willing to set up a local entity here i i don't know but at the moment yes it is unfortunate that um you know any any payments in crypto where services are being provided will be subject to a a, a flat 30% tax bracket in terms of um how this is going to impact exchanges exchanges in in any case have been interacting with the government with the regulators with the uh, you know body here um to 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 be regulated to to be more hands on with this industry and with providing information to the government so the government is now in a way pu- putting the onus on them that you know they 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 are they are the ones who are going to be providing all the information especially uh, the 1% tds uh, provision is going to be something that most of the time the exchanges will be enforcing because most of the trades happen there so a lot of information flow will now um, happen between exchanges and the government um, up until now it was more of a uh, the government would send a, a letter or notice to the exchange saying okay please provide us your data for xyz customers or please provide us data for all your customers but now automatically because of this tds provision exchanges will be providing data to the government on a continuous basis um in terms of startups as i mentioned before um most crypto centric startups are already uh, you know to adopt domicile outside of india they understand that the regulatory in here has not been very supportive um for newer ones as well uh, because the tax bracket is extremely high uh, india may not be the number one choice but that would not deter startups because at the moment there are so many different countries which are embracing crypto which are creating a favorable regulatory framework around it um that you know there is there is a number of options in place it's just that you have to figure out which one you have to incorporate or set up in so it will it will make the process slightly longer for startups to incorporate to get going but i don't think uh, the, the the mission or vision will be lost just because there is a higher tax rate in india okay got it and this let us one last thing um do you think that when it comes to um, this news or like this in the regulation standpoint do you think after some debates or further amendments in the bill uh, in the coming bill or do you think it, this is probably final i know you're not in a position to answer that question but just from like the past experience do you think that there can be debates and there can be certain sort of um, changes or do you think this is going to be all finalized 
well, what was announced today is is going to become applicable, but there is always a process of uh, of the industry or of taxpayers interacting with the government and making recommendations. And I think a number of those recommendations are going to be put out, and sometime pretty soon, uh, once you know we have we have analyzed all provisions of today's draft, because a number of you know different people are being either left or you know they are being unjustly treated as as we simply discussed. If if you know if you are receiving services, if you are re- receiving crypto against services, so uh, amendments always happen. It's 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 a very normal thing um, for for tax laws, but it would take a little bit of time to happen. And um, as and when you know people start complying with these taxes, as and when the government also realizes that okay, these are things either we left out or things we can actually improve on by introducing an amendment, those will keep coming on as we go ahead. Got it. Thank you so much. No problem, Anush. Uh, Anush. Anush, Anush ji say if you can just uh, tell Anush, uh, Mr. Anush to just send me a request because I I couldn't find that. Uh, sure, Kash, give me one minute. Please. Kashif, I'm going so I'm to sure. drop off. Sorry, mm-hmm. I have another call starting in two minutes. So I've already right. clicked Anuj. He's, uh, so for everybody else, Anuj is also a chart accountant. He's been working in the crypto and tax space for a while. I think he should also be able to help out. And until he joins, uh, there is also Kashif, <laughs> who is a tax expert. He has been in this space for a while and we've been we've done so many videos. We've had so many discussions. I'm sure Kashif can also answer a few questions. So um, in the meantime, it was great speaking with you all. I, I hope to be back here soon. And until then, I think it's, a, it's still a day to rejoice and, and uh, you know, just take a deep breath that crypto will not be banned in India. And um, until then, I will leave you to all to it. Thank you so much, Kashya, for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Anush. Thanks a lot. So, Anush, Anush is there. Uh, Pranav, Web3 ki dunia. Hmm. Pranav, Pranav, you want to ask something? Or you want to add on to something? Pranav? Hi, 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 Kashif. Uh, uh, Anuj is also there. Hi, Anuj. Hi, Kashif. Hi, everyone. Yeah. So, Pranav, you want to you want to add add on to something, or you have no, some no, question? I, I, first, like first of all, thanks for organizing this uh, awesome like you know uh, the, the session. And most of the things are clear to me now, and I'm really grateful that you organized this. But like you know, I, I do have like I'm really happy that India has recognized crypto as a thing, and you know. Now we can say that we are a tax, uh, like crypto friendly nation and we are more so looking towards progressive technologies. But I do think like, you know, there are lots and lots of things that like, you know, just for the sake of making things happen in uh, April and that's like just three months from now. There are a lot of things that have been uh, like, you know, neglected. I believe that all the people in uh, like in India, in the, the biggest power that India currently has is the power that we have, right? And the best part right now about living in India was like, you know, could live, live in India and work for the US because there are lots of visa restrictions that have happened and with COVID, this has even increased, right? So you could work in the time zone, live in India and get trade in crypto without any swift transfers or very, without that particular company's entity living in India. And that's something which will be shielded off more and more now with this new tax regime that has come up. This power of like, you know, being a global citizen, or being a global developer, being a global uh, person who can live from anywhere and build for the world will be, you know, shedded off. And India might have to take, take a back step here. And I think with this, there'll be like, you know, uh, some kind of backstopping for all the developers who are wanting to uh, work, uh, work for the world, but live in India. That's, that's one point that, you know, I, I do think, and it's something to be considered. And as I always believe, there's a down to up approach where you can, you know, always talk to your uh, uh, Lok Sabha MPs and discuss about that is something. And second thing I just really want to quickly touch up is that there are lots and lots of things that government, while you know using that transfer word, has not considered. For example, if I am a LP at a Uniswap, like you know I get uh, paid in crypto and I become an LP in Uniswap, right? It will not be first of all shown to anybody. Secondly, I'll be earning yield, but that will also like you know pretty much remain anonymous. I can put that yield in a Uniswap uh, in in a, in a Aave uh, pool. Or somewhere in uh, Olympus DAO and still like you know get accrued of it. So what I think is there is a lot that is not discovered and putting flat restrictions on things makes like you know it, 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 it a little negation in a way. What I would have like you know really loved is 
having crypto as a flat asset kind of thing like a property where you know there are restrictions and accordingly we could have happily you know uh, made things work including a consulting firm or something like that kashi what do you think about these two opinions yeah I'll definitely uh, i agree to you most to the point you have mentioned here and uh, before that but the, we have an expert with us i am just trying to find him uh, his name is uh, so uh, his name is anuj uh, and his twitter handle is c a so can anuj gupta 89 sir if if, if you are listening to me uh, if you could just send me a request so that i can make you a speaker uh, he is an expert on tax taxation anuj actually just told me that uh so i'm not able to find him fair enough uh yeah so anuj uh, dot web anuj dot web is from uh, wazir x if i'm if i yes yes. yes yes anuj what is your take on it because your take is also very important from from a perspective of an exchange how you look at this development and uh what is your mind what is your thought process at this very moment yeah right now what we see that uh, the government is uh, saying that they are going to um, tax uh, virtual assets but again that they are again what the community and what the industry was asking to categorization of the assets right so here they this is sort of they are putting uh, uh all the assets under one one slab that is 30% and even nft as well so what i see that here the uh, like uh, industry is seeking a more clarity even there is no uh, sort of like minimum amount like uh, if you see the gaming industry if you are uh, uh, earning or winning around like uh, 10000 then there is you are not liable to pay the tax uh, pay the taxes right so here we don't have any certain of uh, slabs right and this sort of like uh, uh, all these assets are coming under 30% and, the, and when again the transactions happening so if we are not sure whether the transactions include centralized uh, exchanges only or they are going to consider uh, consider the decent and how they are going to mapping it so there is lot of uh, clarity uh, from the uh, government and so right now we are also just figuring out like how to read it right so reading through the lines is not making sense as of now but again the government is considering that uh, this is the taxable uh, income and uh, that someone is getting into crypto is taxable so the government is sort of like looking towards like a way forward like right, when it comes to regulation at least they are considering it uh, as an asset right so uh, this is a, like first time the government officially uh, uh, recognized this right as an asset so this is something positive we are uh, getting uh, from this uh, financial bit and uh, more or less on taxes there is lot of confusion right now is like we need more clarity and uh, then we can see because that 1% tds is huge confusion like uh, so right now <laughs> can't say anything but yeah this is what i have i have understood uh, from the document as of now fair enough fair enough i know there are many things that are that is not clear but at this very moment what is important is that today uh, as a country uh, you know as a community we should appreciate this fact that for the first time uh, you know all those rumors that those were floating around in all those media houses that we are, they are going to ban it they are going to uh, you know put people behind bars they are going to put people behind jail and all those kind of, all those narratives uh, have come to rest i remember uh, you know since uh, during crypto kanun uh, we were we were we were aware and there used to be lot of cases they, that used to come uh, to you know to my friend and my co we will accept my request or not but if he like he accept i'll that'll be great for me and for this twitter space because he's one of the most respected uh, personalities in crypto so ajit sir ka take mil jaye to maza aa jayega ajit sir ajit sir i want you to be there as a speaker please give us your 5 minutes i have sent you the request ajit sir yes ajit sir is here so welcome ajit sir so chalo while he's setting while he's setting up uh, while he's setting up he's, he dropped out so the important part today is that you know there were there were many instances where the you know uh, people who were dealing in crypto were looked upon with a suspicion and uh, there were many cases where you know there was no clarity uh, in term for crypto people used to go to police station to report for cases of fraud uh, but they couldn't do it uh, because there was no clarity as such and there were many a times uh, there instances where 
where people actually got harassed uh, because this general perception that people who are dealing in crypto are not the right people or, or they are doing something weird. But I think today, uh, you know, everything has come to a rest. I think that that movement in itself, if we forget about the tax slab and what is happening in terms of taxation and all the compliances, if we just keep that thing aside, if you just look at from a perspective of only that recognition of the, you know, that space, this development is like really huge. And and uh, to be honest, you should first, you know, kind of celebrate this thing because we all have been together in it. We have all seen it and we have all seen that, you know, those different cycles we have gone through, emotional cycles where, you know, even our family members were a little apprehensive that why you want to make a career in it. So there's a lot of clarity today. Now people can confidently, you know, look at this industry for making their careers maybe. Uh, and I'm sure this is the first good step uh, that has been taken. Uh, yes, uh, there are a couple of things that that will get evolved and that that will get uh, you know changed maybe going forward because now there will be more interaction of the industry uh, representatives with the government. I'm sure there are many things that will improve going forward. But at this very moment, let's not be very uh, very critical about maybe taxation, but because people who are old in the system they know uh, the importance of this moment. So I think uh, this this in itself is a is a great great thing and a great moment. Uh, Anu has again dropped off. In the meanwhile, I'll take uh, uh, inputs from Shivam, who is also one of the influencers in this space. Shivam, what is your take? Do you want to add something to it? Uh, thank you, Ashish Bhai, for uh, one for letting me in. Um, I think one of one of the key things that uh, that's not a topic of discussion uh, right now, from what I see on Twitter and YouTube, is is the CBDC part um, and and the confirmation of uh, the government going the government is going the fact that government is going to use blockchain um, and i think that opens up as prana mentioned a lot of opportunities from a career perspective i think uh, a key thing in all of this uh, if we ignore the taxation and all of these things for the time being because of course there is a lot of clarity needed uh, from a career and a lot of people who were considering moving out of india and we i, I personally know a couple of blockchain developers who were like uh, I, I feel more comfortable in a different country and for a lot of blockchain developers and people in blockchain uh, moving to a different country is not that difficult because of the demand right now and i think that the fact that the, our government is taking a step or they're technically the first step in the right direction here uh, is going to open up a lot of opportunity and i i think there's 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 good news going forward even if in the short term, we might see some regulations come out, uh, might not make us happy, maybe take away from some of the profits that people are making. But uh, long picture, 20 years down the line, I think this is great. Right. Thank you very much, Shivam. Ajit sir is here. Ajit sir, can you hear me? Sir, you will get to listen to your voice. I'm so sorry. I was talking on mute. I hope you can hear me. Now I can hear you, sir. <laughs> Welcome, sir. I was like, I was like waiting to hear your voice, sir. So I mean, thank you, thank you very much for taking out time. I mean, what is your take, sir? I mean, I really because we all look up to you as as you know our as our mentor, and uh, your take and your uh, you know uh, your view will be very interesting to know. So you know, on the whole, some people say, "Okay, regulatory step, hai, tax may have a problem by thirty percent, etc." And of course, the killer. They change from sale to transfer, which of course I think is the most draconian thing we heard today. But what I have not heard anybody say, and hence people on your your Twitter spaces will be hearing it for the first time now, is that when you look at some provision, for example, I hope uh, even before I joined this difference between sale and transfer has been covered. If not, I would like to cover it first. What do you say, Kashyap? Yes, sir. Please do cover that, sir. Please. See, there is direct tax in India, which means when you make money, you pay income tax. There is indirect tax in India, such as GST. Where mere transfer from one place to another also may incur a taxation. Now, uh, Income Tax Act, we have actually in Section 41C today seen that for virtual digital assets, they have said we will replace the word sale with transfer, which basically means that if I buy, let us say, crypto on an exchange, let's say exchange ABC, and then I take it out of there, right, and go take it somewhere else, which means I transfer it, uh, they will say, you know what? Whatever is the difference between your purchase price and the price at which uh, the time you transferred has now, you have to pay 30% tax on that. This is the meaning of transfer. This is how value added uh, taxation, which is also GST, VAT in the past, etc. works. And to ensure that you will do this, they have put the liability of doing a 1% PDS on the exchange, which has to now put 1%. So the government is saying, hmm, there is my remaining person. Please understand the 1% will be on the full amount. 
the 30% will be on the profit. So these are not comparable numbers. Now the crazy thing is that why should I be taxed for transfer? This is absolute nonsense. In fact, I was on TV a moment ago. I said this should be unconstitutional. But please understand the news that had come towards the end of December when the parliament was still in session, the fact that you were even using private wallets such as MetaMask may not be allowed. So please understand what the government is going through. I have worked with two finance ministers, so regrettably not this present finance minister, but the same finance ministry for years. And they are worried that this entire non-traceability, the fact that people can transact on DEXs, etc., that they will lose complete control. They won't know what is happening and will not be able to tax it. This, by the way, is a view globally. Even recently in uh, Dubai, uh, the, the finance minister of one of the Emirates, I think Sharjah, uh, not Dubai, but Sharjah, said that while crypto is here to stay, it is impossible to regulate. Right? So this has to be able to deal with this. They said, you know what? You pay me the tax and then you can adjust it. This is the second one. People have uh, heard what the finance minister said, that losses cannot be offset. And even there are CS right now on various TV channels who are saying oh, losses cannot be offset. Clarification is but I think it is utter nonsense. People are not understanding what losses cannot be offset means. Of course, if I make profit in one crypto and loss in another, it can be set off. The losses cannot be offset has actually, if you read the wording, and that is why it's important to read the finance bill and not just look at news channel tips. I have read the finance bill on all the relevant sections. It says losses cannot be offset against other sections of the act. That what is the income tax act. So, for example, if you make a loss in selling sugarcane and you make a profit in selling Bitcoin, you can't set it off. So, cryptocurrency will be... So, I have not read anywhere that losses cannot be offset at all. So, that is one. And the second thing which I think is fairly draconian is that losses cannot be carried forward to the next year, which is utter nonsense. Because if I make a loss in April, I have 12 months to set it off. But if I make a loss in March, I have days or hours to set it off. This doesn't make sense. This is not good taxation. So, I think that is the one thing which is totally inexplicable because the government is worried about money laundering or specifically tax evasion in this case. Having said that, I have told you that the one thing you have never heard about which you are hearing here for the first time is that this, this utterly draconian transfer instead of sale is the price we the community has to pay to allow the to make the government allow us to use private wallets such as MetaMask. Because if they didn't do this and they still wanted to not lose on their tax income, they would have to say, oh, you know what, you can only work with exchanges and that to Indian exchanges, you can't use private wallets. So it was one very bad choice versus a bad choice. Luckily, the government chose the bad choice, not the very bad choice. Otherwise, we would have to stop using MetaMask if we wanted to comply with Indian law. Very well explained, sir. Very well explained, and, and that's what we were discussing here earlier. Anush Basin was also here, and even he was he had his opinion to share, and he was also of an opinion that thirty percent, uh, you know, and so so a couple of things were like quite uh, you know difficult to understand. And one part, uh, Ajit sir, you will also agree that there are a lot of professionals in the country who are earning crypto as a as a source of income. They are they are they are a community manager or a graphic designer for various crypto projects, and for them, uh, it it won't they won't be able to treat it as an income. They have to play a third pay a 30% tax flat on that. So, uh, you know what? Today is a day of celebration. The government has finally said something. In fact, I was uh, you know, being interviewed a few days ago and people are asking very complex questions for the finance minister. Uh, it was a, a program on what would you like to convey to the finance minister for the budget? And I had said that I have just one thing to say. I didn't say something. <laughs> so that has happened. But having said that, the part you talked about receiving payments, while I will again read the fine print, fine according to me, it has not been addressed at all. But the only thing that all governmental agencies and departments are very clear, whether it's RBI or the finance minister, there was no debate, there was no ifs and buts, was that they did not want to allow the use of cryptocurrency assets as cryptocurrency, which means as payment mechanism. That was the one thing that they were all very, very keen on, that it should not be used as money. Right? And which is why, coincidentally, very importantly, Nirmala Sitaraman says virtual digital asset. I love that. It should not even be called crypto because then, you know, what if you don't use cryptography or some other technology? The virtual digital asset, I think, is a very good characterization. It is in line with what people do around the world. But at this point of time, the 30% thing that you talked about at income, I think that if people are making a lot of money and they would anyway be at the 30% bracket, leave alone the not set offable losses from other sections of the income tax act. The challenge is going to be to the small guy. Income tax in India and in all countries has always been extraordinarily favorable to the poor person and not so favorable to the rich person. This is the first time that the rich people will any pay, pay what they would have to pay. It's the poor person who is going to have to pay a large amount. That I think is again a fairly strange thing. 
but you know i already explained to you what i believe are the government's uh, you know the, what the government's pressures are and they may have made a bad choice but the alternative could have been worse right i completely understand and thank you very much for your input sir uh, tanvi is also here with us so tanvi is an expert on policy and she has been advising you know lot of governments around the world it will be interesting to hear what what is the take of uh, you know tanvi ratna on it tanvi uh, if you are if you are able to hear me if, if you can just tell us your views on this latest developments on taxation yeah hi kashir hi ji uh, good to be here so uh, yeah i think uh, historic day i think uh, you know as ajit said that uh, at least something was said uh and then now we can uh, you know we can have uh, you know our uh, gripes with what was said uh, but uh, i think in terms of the scheme you know i've put out my thoughts as well in uh, you know it's been a little bit mad the last two hours or so uh but uh, the first thing is that in terms of what has been put out uh there are largely four major provisions that have been put out in the bill okay um and these are sort of laid out in the memorandum but of course they will be detailed out uh, you know by the cbdt and the bill is giving powers to the cbdt to elaborate on these and whatever the cbdt says will be binding on uh, everyone so uh, there are largely four major provisions i have already put it out in a thread with those excerpts of the memo the first is of course the new income tax scheme that's the 115 bbh that's the one where they are laying out the 30% tax requirement right uh, the second piece is i think more draconian also is really the tds provision right because now uh, they are adding a new clause uh, on tds uh, which is the 194s and that is going to mandate a 1% transaction fee uh, okay and on every transaction and that doesn't just have a fee that actually requires a fair amount of reporting if you're doing tds uh, collection so that is going to collect transaction data it's also going to uh, i think this is very heavy right like it's uh, even more than what exchanges charge you uh, uh, as transaction fee so 1% tds uh the third piece is around gifting so any income from crypto you might have you know maybe mastered as gifting or whatever that is also going to get taxed and this is interesting because uh here for the first time now you're seeing um an alternative classification of crypto like this this has been deliberated for some time right whether it's a good or a property or asset like how do we classify it so uh for the purpose of gifting it's going to be classified as property okay um and this is i think now we're getting into that similar zone as uh, you know us regulation in other countries where you have all these dichotomies you know between whether it's property or it's asset or what is what is it right uh and then the final piece that they're doing is they're defining crypto assets and this definition is very sweeping okay so it's it's covering uh of course the fungible tokens it's covering the non fungible tokens uh but it's also sort of covering you know any other token right that behaves anything that behaves in a similar way so uh, whether it's gaming tokens whether it's governance tokens you know uh, they are they are pretty much uh, bringing everything into into the sampet right so these are the four things that have been laid out right now this is what has happened if you ask for my perspective on what i feel this means um i think it doesn't really comment uh, it does in a way talk about a step towards regulation the signaling their intent to regulate which is great which is good uh it doesn't necessarily mean that everything will be legal because uh you know under the income tax act even things that are illegal are taxed like transactions means anything it can it, even even if you launder money you pay tax on it and then you have to pay back that money and you have to go to jail right so i mean it doesn't mean that everything will be legal but uh i think definitely it's a huge forward uh, you know uh, signaling that there will be regulation um but what is legal and what is it uh, will be laid out in the bill right that's in the india crypto bill uh, and that has not been tabled right what i feel this whole thing i found it very rushed okay because uh, even from the discussions we saw within uh, government there was not really readiness for pushing this out okay like uh, as of december everybody was confident that we will push out the bill in this budget session then there was a whole rethink uh, even on taxation it was not really the first thing to put out because if you think about it taxation is actually the most detailed piece 
of any regulation right it's it's the one where like you have to specify and over specify everything right um it's not like the first thing you would normally hear like the first thing would have been in terms of you know they they had some concerns around advertisement or something around token classification like these had really been the first few things that would have come out uh but it seemed a bit rushed to me right uh, like uh, bringing it out and saying it suddenly uh and it's very sparse right the whole text around it um i think it's more as a deterrent right so i get the you know what ajit is saying i i get that yeah it it seems draconian and everything i think it's meant to seem draconian because i i read it more as a deterrent um and mostly for like two reasons i also laid this out separately uh in a thread the first i think this high tax no loss offsets no loss carrying forward this is very much an intent to deter trading activity i think the tds is also an intent to deter trading activity it's also an intent to gather data i think around crypto transactions um so that's my reading on it um and i i think it's still you know a huge step forward i i there's no denying that right but uh, i do i do think but i mean i'll just stop that that's my uh, my take on this thank you very much uh, tanvir it was quite comprehensive and i think you actually simplified a uh, lot of things uh, what is your take on uh, tanvir how uh, ex- you you think that it's a it's a good news for exchanges you think that there will be more people not to exchanges or there is going to be an increase in volume on exchanges or do you think that Uh, no people will be like a little apprehensive and they'll be like not apprehensive maybe they'll be like least interested now because that sheen uh, of crypto because the reason for for making for people making quick money in crypto is probably has faded away now um yeah so I, i'm not so sure like is it really fading away though like if, if you're making like 1000% gains uh, and you're paying like 30% tax that's still very good income right you can't necessarily get from many sources i'm you know this is <laughs> my gripe with a lot of things that i've voiced also in all these like i don't get what intent you're trying to convey right like i mean if you really don't want this stuff then just go ahead and say you don't want it right uh if you're trying to make it uh but it's like at a level where it's not really so bad then you know you're not helping anyone right i mean then if you want people to make money from this and trade from it then you know create the right kind of ring fencing you know create a create a uh you know help them help them do it in a way that you know helps you also make more revenue right like it's not very clear to me it reads to me like it is the intent is to deter but it's also doing it in a way that'll create a lot of confusion and you know the i mean that it's not even clear what is legal what's not legal like and then it's opening i think it's going to open up even the government to so much of litigation and stuff right like let's say that right now uh, i'm trading only in privacy coin and i've abide by the taxation and everything and oh the the funny thing also is that all these provisions are coming into force at different points in time so it's interesting to understand why that is happening because some things are coming into force this year some things are coming into force next year um and and so that's that's a little curious right like why that's happening uh but i think um i think it's just going to create a lot of consternation because you know without defining the token classification framework and how you're going to treat what as what kind of asset uh what is allowed what's not allowed like it, it doesn't make sense right like i mean i see as a policy person i i, I this is not how you know we would introduce anything you first lay the crypto bill then you would lay these things so it just seems very rushed it seems a bit strange honest uh, that's my reason yeah i, I agree with you uh, to an extent that uh, you know all these uh, so the uh, higher tax lab and uh, tax lab on every transfer seems to so the intent is that you know people should be discouraged in a sense to uh you know transfer crypto uh, first of all or to do crypto trading and obviously for people who are looking you know people who are who are thinking of joining uh, maybe crypto or doing stuff will definitely get kind of a kind this kind of a feeling where they'll they'll say okay fine i'll end up making more money on stocks because uh, there you do not have a direct 
direct you know 30 percent flat 30 percent taxation and, and 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 in stocks i can also you know uh, take my losses i can carry forward forward my losses right while dealing in stocks uh, but that is not the case in crypto so suppose if i if i if there is an individual who's trying to evaluate uh, crypto and stocks and if he's trying to invest his or her money uh, will definitely compare uh, you know, stocks and crypto and figure out okay in crypto you have a direct taxes so somewhere uh, the intent is there the intent is clear that they they don't want uh, suddenly this uh, the the industry to flourish at a at a scale you know, probably they want to keep checks before they come up with a regulation i think that is that is quite visible and uh, and and it looks like that going forward uh, as many people expect that you know the the it's a good sign for exchanges i'm really not sure at this very moment because uh, exchanges uh, earning is only through crypto trading and the more people trade more they earn their money through fees and uh, how things going to shape up on exchanges are people going to trade more on centralized exchanges how people going to trade more crypto to crypto uh, till the time we get more clarity on transfers and find detailing on transfers i don't think so it's a great news for exchanges as well but all in all uh, overall for the industry at least then you know they always tell us that you should always look at the past from where you've been coming from and i think from where we all have been coming from overall it's a great sign because we have we are coming from a time when there was so much of uncertainty there was so much of fuds so much of rumors so much of you know negative news that were coming from you know all those mainstream media houses and uh, uh, you know, and based on those sources, I think everything has come to a rest today. And uh, it seems that the government uh, seems to be working on crypto bill. And I'm sure after the, uh, Tanvi, you have some idea. We are expecting something in US in the month of, they're planning to come up with a clear guidelines on crypto. Maybe that can prove to be a base for, uh, for us to maybe uh, make something on those lines. Yeah, so in the US, actually, there's some budding developments, right? Like, so the, there's now the, if you remember that whole furor around the FinCEN's unhosted wallet ruling, uh, that, you know, it, I mean, it led to a storm in the crypto community. Like, that was the big storm before the intro bill, uh, uh, you know, that, that had happened. And uh, so many, many people had written to the FinCEN, uh, you know, about about this. And uh, that apparently is sort of rising from the ashes. Like, the idea is getting resurrected in the FinCEN. And I, I know from the US side, there is a lot of concern that, uh, you know, private wallets are going to get... Um, sort of, uh, you know, ba banned or like outlawed in some way, right? Uh, there was also some provision snuck into the infrastructure that got passed. I'll have to just revisit that. Um, but then, yeah, I think the, the real big one that, that uh, everyone's sort of looking to from the US is uh, on SEC enforcement, right? Uh, and on stable coins, because this year there's supposed to be movement on both of these. Um, and then those are going supposed to be fairly heavy handed. Uh, you know, and uh, I think last year I was already, you know, uh, speaking with, uh, this, we have this lawyers uh, forum where you know, I was like, uh, don't you feel like the treasury mm -hmm. is sort of dollarizing uh, stable coins? Because um, if you're making them fully reserved back by dollar assets and then they come under the supervision of the Federal Reserve, then your plan B just becomes a plan B for the dollar, right? Like, I mean, you're literally making this a dollar extension. Uh, and it does seem worryingly like that's what's happening, right? And I think uh, that since this is a big lifeblood of the crypto economy, the stable coins, like those might even come under federal reserve control, right? So this is something I'd written about also in my coiners column earlier, like some months back, but now it does seem to be going that way. And then also this is the year where the... Uh, you know, the FATF guidance, which uh, was fully, um, uh, you know, it, it was the it was not even a, as the final FATF guidance that came into force last year. And it's it's talking about, uh, you know, DeFi uh, coming under strict rules, like even developer held accountable and like things like that, right? Like all of that is also going to get, uh, uh, like countries will start ratifying it from this year. That's why I suspect the unhosted wallet ruling and all that is coming because, and you know, governments can just say that, hey, like, you know, it's not us, it's like the FATF that's like mandating this and we are bound by it, right? So um, I don't know, like this, uh, I I'm not sure that the signaling this year is like very 
positive like when it comes to regulation i actually feel india might end up doing something that's a little better like uh, i mean i know <laughs> many, many people think i'm often like hopeful on government but i do think like our government if i'm honest like is more tech loving than other governments like they they, they are more quick to mm-hmm. sort of uh, see tech mm-hmm. as a good thing innovation as a good thing growth and startups is a good thing and i think that's really the thing that has also tied crypto through you know all this time like we we were at bans almost two three times uh in the last 18 months right and the government has always reconsidered that so i i i don't know i mean i don't think internationally there's going to be too much that uh you know we we might celebrate but i do think that maybe in india uh there could be some some good things that come uh later on right uh thank you very much i have uh i have one more speaker uh, who is a chartered accountant as well riti so riti uh, as a ca do you have some points to add on here uh thank you ashif bhai uh, you have been listening to the space and i was there in other space also i think you know uh, 30% um, 30% is the slab where flat 30% is normally tax to gamblers and me being in this industry i actually feel bad about the same that why 30% because it's the most heaviest part of tax that is happening to us at the same time i'm happy about the fact at least they are going to recognize this industry somehow or they are going to recognize or they are, they are going to eventually change and transform but the way they have come up with the flat 30% tax is like too much for anybody and i think paying even if you earn in cryptos or any other form paying a heavy amount of taxes it mostly corrupts people and uh, people are not ready to pay that amount of taxes even for crypto like uh, in us uh, the biggest miner he got himself listed in nasdaq so eventually we look for better things so without coming with the more regulations without classifying it at a particular um, uh, as a particular asset uh, directly coming up with 30% just happy about the fact okay they are going to recognize at the same time uh, in a very similar fashion as gambling income is taxed that you cannot set off Uh, your losses of the similar income under any other heads which is again bad so the only light at the end of the tunnel is maybe we have a good amount of recognition uh, in the coming future they come up with a better regulation but at the same time the the beginning is scary 30% setting off in the similar heads uh, similar head only only if you own cryptos then only you can uh, set off your losses there so these two things are like really scary um, the good thing is okay we'll have at least some kind of recognition and there are people who uh, who just messaged and said at least we can show our income somehow or we we have that guts to tell that okay we pay 30% taxation so yeah this is from my side uh riti i had just one question to you uh, since you are a chartered accountant and uh, i'm sure you you chartered accountants do have a community as well they have an organization as well definitely and so do you think that going forward chartered accountants can look for more clarity from the income tax department because ultimately people uh, yes. chartered chartered accountants are the gateway uh, to you know to access government right so chartered right. accountants help you to you know explain you and to reach out to the government they are the kind of a bridge so what is your take uh, is chartered accountants uh, are going to take more clarity going forward or maybe are, is there a point of time where their inputs are also taken yes yes definitely we have our senior members who are there in the community that is there to regulate the cryptos so uh, i work with the delhi firm where in the senior most members uh, those guys are involved in setting up the law and regulation regarding the same so eventually earlier it was told ban then there was a small indian fund then they are coming up with the taxation so actually we are moving towards a positive direction but with a lot lot of glitches there there will be a lot of challenges because there are dexes there are mining there are main, mul- multiple other, other things so when it comes to chartered accountant we are soon going to see some kind of accounting standards that come up for us that how a particular asset class with so ever asset class the cryptos will be treated in so eventually uh, there will be accounting standards there will be some new kind of laws and regulations in the it act 2000 so they they'll come up with more amount of laws regulations and accounting standards as we move ahead and these things are already in process and the government is already um, tied up with icai and qcas uh, who are giving their uh, as a ca that what can be done 
i think uh, there are people who who are here from exchanges and uh, my th- the, the question that i have in mind is one person tds uh, is, is like um, how much the exchanges are going to follow it and is it going to be only at their end is something that is still in my mind can you explain to our audience what is this one percent like i mean what is what is going to be the implication of it how how one needs to deal with it uh at the user end uh, we are not supposed the, the major thing is exchanges will charge tds uh, the tax will be deducted at source when when we actually take up some kind of transaction uh, there will be tax deduction at source that will be done by the exchanges and then they will be depositing the those yeah. that okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Our, so, so our, and, and they will be they will be issuing us the tds certificates now now that is something that i that is not clear to me yet i, I have few meetings uh during the day and around with with other chartered accountants and in the community so uh, i'll come back with few of the answers that uh, even i am a bit skeptical about sure. thank you very much thanks a lot riti we will yes. we'll, uh, continue uh, we'll continue to be in touch and uh, we'll definitely have more spaces going forward uh, yes, i have you, i have i have one speaker who, who is probably i have to tell you one of the biggest i will not use the word biggest but a, but a nft enthusiast I, I, in, in fact whenever i follow anyone in nft space that uh, how nft space is evolving i think dheeraj shah uh, is one person who is actually uh, you know quite enthusiastic in crypto nft space and is doing quite well uh now i want to take his perspective in a you know very summarized way because i really want to uh, you know i want a summarization from dheeraj that how he looks at you know a tax of 30% on nfts and how he looks at that and what is the potential of nfts that that will get uh, you know he thinks think there is that going forward uh, we'll see that there will be lesser interest in nfts from india uh, what is your take on it uh yeah i might have some background noise uh, but you know what i think it's uh, quite bullish uh, for the ecosystem in general because in like you know just few months back uh, like you know we were just talking about how uh, banning uh, like you know all these transactions uh, will be deter into our space because uh, artists whatever money they can make right now they can't make but they're selling uh, and making money in eth or usd uh, and paying tax on it is quite okay because if you're doing a high value sale anyway you have to pay taxes i mean we can always discuss right like we can always uh, comment what are high taxes low taxes but it's a step in nice direction that's all i would say for now sorry i was running to that why i sound like this <laughs> running at 330 you got so excited <laughs> right so thank you very much guys i have a uh, tv appearance on nd tv at 4 so i need to prepare a bit for that as well and today is been a hectic day it's been a busy day tanvi thank you very much for your time and you know and i just read your uh, thread it's a beautiful twitter thread you, that you have written thank you very much for sharing that information i mean people like you people like uh, you know shivam dheeraj pranav so many ajit ji you know they 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 make, it's a wonderful community i mean and thank you very much you know whenever something goes wrong people are together whenever something good happens people are together that's the beauty of it that's the beauty of this community and we all have seen those times as well when there was a lot of you know rumors and a lot of negative news were prevailing but we were together and even today we are together and going forward we are going to be together and we are going to share the right information and that is the objective of beginning as well that is the objective of me and thank you very much and i'm sure there was many many questions those were answered today and there was a lot of confusion that was prevailing i'm sure that has been answered as well and please do sh- share follow me tanvi uh, you know there are people who are actually coming up with a very right information in the policy and taxation and regulatory space i think these are the platforms where you can follow and uh, thank you very much for joining in thank you very uh, uh, thank you everyone and thank you for to all my speakers over there in the past thank you anush you are not listening but thank you very much for your inputs and uh, i might conduct a another twitter space in hindi because i know there are many people and my audience base specifically uh, is a hindi based audience so i'll do it in evening maybe at 7 or 8 so people who are interested can join that as well uh, but thank you very much for listening and for giving your time thank you very much thanks kashish yeah. thanks thanks